This is an Asus G73JH laptop. I bought it in 2010. It has an Intel i7 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 1 terabyte of storage. It originally came with Windows 7 operating system. I upgraded it to Windows 10, but because the CPU is so old, and progressively over time, I've installed many software applications on it, the laptop was very sluggish. So I'm decommissioning this laptop, and I want to use it as a very basic Windows 10 platform without any major software, and I can use this as a laptop for simple applications to for example, connect to a lithium battery management system. So last week, I reinstalled Windows 10 Pro 64-bit operating system on this. There's no third-party applications installed on it. And then I did a check disk to scan the disk for errors and also a defragmentation. The one last thing I need to fix on this is that because the laptop is so old, the CMOS battery is dead. So join me in this video as I tear down this laptop to get to the CMOS battery on the motherboard to replace it. Haven't done this before. There will be many screws to remove and put back so I'm going to have to be very careful and have a system so that I do not lose track of which screws go where. Let's make a start. I have the laptop on the reverse side up. First thing is remove the battery. I don't have a anti-static wrap. The last one I had is damaged. So what I'm gonna do is, I have right behind me a vacuum sealing machine. It has a metal chassis. It is plugged into the house AC wall socket. So that means it's earthed. So occasionally I just need to turn back and touch the chassis of that device to be grounded to earth. Next, I'm gonna take this cover off. The two screws. Number one Phillips head. Where I can, I will return the screws to their original sockets because that means I have no chance of losing them or putting them into the wrong socket later on when I'm trying to reassemble. These are the two hard drives. There's two screws on each to remove. Magnetic dish. I've just put two electrical tapes and labeled this left rear, right rear. Orientation is with the laptop this way up. This is on the left, that's on the right. Same thing, label these. To remove it, slide left, lift. And you'll see that's the hard drive. And it's a Seagate 500 gigabyte drive. Model is Momentus 7200.4 500GB It really is tiny So I know that this is on the right hand side Now for the left hand drive Slide to the right, lift and it's out I'm going to put these screws back into the nuts for the hard drive so I don't lose them. I know it's more troublesome, it takes time, but sometimes the time spent being meticulous like this means that I avoid more problems of missing screws or putting them in the wrong place later on or installing into the wrong place later on. So they're back in. Next, I'll take out these screws at the base.
I put label rear case screws number one. So these are all the set of one. And I've labeled one here. And I'll put these screws in here. So it's very clear which screws belong where. I want to remove the rear cover. Two screws here. Remove this. I can remove this back cover plate. Just a gentle flick. This is dusty. I might as well clean this. I've got isopropyl alcohol and earbuds to clean the dust. We have to take this keyboard off and there's four slots where you have to insert a flathead and uh, pry it. You have to do it gently so as not to break the fragile keyboard template. You have to take care not to just pry this thin template but the entire keyboard out including the buttons. It's got a backing that is glued to the body so you have to move it gently and separate it. Then be careful there's a ribbon cable not to break that ribbon cable. There. So there's a ribbon cable. One, two. That's what the reverse side looks like. Two ribbon cables. I now have to remove these three cables. One, two, three. So they've stuck a little yellow tape to keep the ribbon cable from disconnecting. So I just need to peel this yellow tape off. I'll put it in the orientation I took it off. That's the orientation I took it off. So I know to put it back that way. I'm just gonna get a pair of tweezers and pull this out. Done. To remove this ribbon cable, there's a black lever. I believe if I flick this lever up, yes. There. You gotta be careful with these things, especially if you've never done it before. Never use force. It either comes out easily or I'm doing it wrongly. There. One, two, three cables out. To remove this top cover, I have to take out the monitor. So, there are three number one Phillips head screws on each side. One side down, one more side to go. That should release it. I will label these screws number three. Number three on my container. And screws go in the container. Now see if I can flick this out. I will give these cables a clean filthy with dust time to take the top cover off I need to take these two screws off
So take a sharp blade and see if I can slowly pry this top casing off. Uh, I think I can't take this out because I need to take the DVD drive out. I want to remove the DVD drive. I've removed the screw there that holds it in. Now I just use the screwdriver and push it up. There we are. Flick it back up. Get my blade again. I think these are two more screws I have to remove. I believe they hold the cover down. This is position six. All right, let's see if I can remove the top cover now. Ah oh, yes, come off. What else do I need to remove? I wonder if I need to remove these ones. Yes, I had to remove those screws as well. So I'm gonna label those, those screw positions. I think there's a few more screws here I have to remove from the underside. I suspect these screws need to be removed. So let's have a try. As I said, it must come off easily. If it doesn't come off easily, I'm doing something wrong. So never force it. Make the number eight position. Flip it to the front again and see if I can remove it. Always slowly, slowly, never rush. That's it. That's the reverse side. The fans, the motherboard, Ethernet connector, USB, USB, microphone, earphone jack, VGA, power input socket, HDMI, USB, USB. I think I'll give this uh, isopropyl alcohol clean. The fan blades are very dusty. I'll give them an isopropyl alcohol treatment. You couldn't suck this out with a hand vacuum anyway. The cotton box, you guaranteed to take maximum dirt out. It's a slow process. You've got to get the earbud with the alcohol into those blades. See how dirty they are? To give the fans a better clean, I'm going to remove them, the three screws here, so that I can clean the underside. Just need to pull out this connector. Look at the dust.
that's the dust at the fan outlet I have to clean the slots for dust because if they cover in dust the hot air cannot be extracted it's isopropyl alcohol so it will evaporate in fact this is 99.9% .9 alcohol so it's highly evaporative I'll remove this ram and give it a clean as well in the contacts I'm just gonna screw this fan retaining screws back in Now I'll remove the fan this side and clean it There's a screw hiding under this Uh, this is the power supply for that fan. I'll just have to unclip it. Threads have broke a piece of it. I'll have to put liquid insulation around that later. Again, it's very dusty and clogged up. Hey, okay, isopropyl alcohol and uh, earbuds. Look at that dust. No way that the uh, machine would have been cooling properly, not with that amount of dust. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry a bit, this fan. As for this fan, I can put it back. Uh, but before I do any of that, I need to take this motherboard out in order to replace the CMOS battery on the reverse side. I think this RAM has enough time to dry. I will slot it back in. Alright, I'll put these fan screws back in so I don't lose them. Right, to take the motherboard out, I have to disconnect some of these cables. Yes, so it's a slot in. I saw a plastic tap, so there's a plastic tap here. There, out. That one's out as well. And I think this this one, I think you flick it up and it unlocks. Okay, I might write the word top. Okay, nearly every cable is out. This one, this is now out. And I'll put a letter T there for top. Remove some screws on the motherboard. This one here. It's a small one, it's another one here, small one, that, that, I'll label them, screw here, it's a bigger screw so it has to be a different numbering, screw here, it's a bigger screw so let's call this number 10, um, any more screws, yes one here, it's also a number 10. Alright, let's see if we can lift up the motherboard. So it comes with the heat sinks. Just disconnect this one here. Put the letter T to be top. There you go. It's just the uh, VGA port stuck on the uh, plastic. That's it. I will give this a spray. That uh, battery that I want to replace. It's ridiculous isn't it? So much effort to remove a CMOS battery. 
there is a consumable item it's a battery type CR2032 all right I have a new energizer CR2032 battery here all this effort just to replace one battery I'm gonna test it make sure it's a healthy battery before I put it in and close everything up the multimeter reads 3.3 volts CR2032 batteries are rated to 3 volts so it's healthy without breaking the flimsy holder there you go I'm gonna measure the uh, existing battery and see what voltage it's at 1.3 volts so definitely dead take the new battery the positive of the battery is here this is the positive side of the battery that's the negative so I need to put the battery this way and if I measure between these two terminals it should give me positive 3.3 volts which it does so I know I have the battery correct this may be the graphics card and this is maybe the CPU so I think I will reapply heat paste over this because after 12 years the heat paste will have been dry and hard remove the screws four screws here There you go. So that's the CPU. That's the heat sink for the CPU. And that's the GPU graphics card and the heat sink for the graphic card. I'm going to remove the old paste. I'm going to take the GPU out as well. I'm just going to put this underneath so that the uh, electronics on the reverse side don't get damaged. I'm going to screw back the screws for the CPU heat sink so I don't lose them. See if I can now remove the heat sink. There, the screws don't come out, so that's good. So that's the heat sink for the graphics card. I'll clean that up as well. Isopropyl alcohol. Same here. Well, I'll so give these connectors a spray. I'll give this memory card contacts a spray. Okay, see if I can scrape this thermal paste off. Yes, it's coming off. I could use a screwdriver just to give it some um, help. Scrape it off. There. Give this one a wipe. Okay. Alright, that's good. Now for this. It's coming off. There still some around the edges I'm just using my nails to scrape it I don't use anything hard and sharp I will let this dry a bit before I apply new thermal paste I'm just gonna use a dry earbud just to clean and make sure it's dry This thermal paste I bought several years ago. If it's still fluid, I can use it. Looks like it's uh, still fluid.
I'm going to apply some paste to the um, heat sinks as well. And the GPU sink. I folded a piece of uh, paper several times over so that I can use as a flat bait to spread it. I think that should be good enough. So we'll put this back. Remove the screws which I put there just to keep it there. Okay, CPU heatsink is now reconnected. Now for the GPU heatsink. These screws are spring loaded. So you got to push down and screw in. The head of screw stands out above the plate. Okay, that's it. That's tight. All good. Batteries in and replaced. Reinstall everything back. Alright, this goes that way. Replug this connector back in. I will screw in the three number 10 screws first. There's one there. There's one here. One more number 10 here. Now I go for number nine. It's two number nines. And this allows me to put the cables back. So let's try this one first. Flick the black lever up and slot this cable in. This is just a push in. There you go. Put this yellow tape back across and this tapes down to the front this one goes in here and this cable slots in there and the transparent tape across that's it this one just pushes down There. Now this is the fan power connector that I snapped a bit of the right hand side connector. This is liquid electrical tape. I'm just going to apply some of that over the area. I think that will do. It's not like glue, so it can be easily removed. It's time to put the case cover back. Just make sure that uh, none of the cables are entangled. I'll take away this electrical tape with the numbers. You 
you need to clip that in I'll put back the screws I see here and here on top number four screw number seven screws reconnect the ribbon cables this one it is flick up and then insert and then flick bar down again yellow tape and tape it over that same thing here lift the ribbon up lift the black lever up slip the tape inside and close the lever down then put the yellow tape over it these two ribbons are for the keyboard let's put the monitor back number three screws three screws here this one do the other side so that you have something holding the other side do up the other screws I can put the back cover on and the number two screws would hold that back cover on okay now to connect the keyboard I've connected the big ribbon on the left I now have to connect the smaller keyboard ribbon okay I've connected the keyboard back in it needs these two number two screws and they're the number one screws That's the last of the number one screws. I need the number six screw. And these are the two number six screws that need to go in to hold the top cover. Install the ram. Bottom one first, makes it easier to fit. All ram in. All right, now to um, in my number eight screws. The three number five screws on the other board. Now to put back in the uh, hard drive. This one on the left. slide it in screw them back next hard drive slide it in and finally the back cover All right, and lastly, the battery pack. And that's it. If you intend to open up your laptop, I encourage you to use the system where you store each logical set of screws uh, by numbering system, because otherwise it's impossible to find the right screws back, unless you do it so often. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more and to help the channel grow. Thank you so much.